Good evening, everybody. I welcome you all for this uh, virtual meeting today. And the topic for today's meeting is the amazing miniature sculptures of the Chola temples. Now, before starting this, uh, I would like to give you a small prelude to this. Cholas, we all know, are magnificent builders of temples. Their temples have been huge, recognized all over the world. All the temple structures that they have built are something massive in size, proportions, and the sculptural value. This has all been created by the imperial Cholas from the 9th century onwards. By the end of the 9th century, or rather I would say in the 10th century when Rajarajan came up as the king of the Chola dynasty, he started the building activity and everything was humongous, very huge structures. The Brahadishwara temple that he created was phenomenal in size. A tall gopuram of 216 feet and spread over such a vast area and the outer prakara and the outer space, built in space, is also very big. So is the Gangai Konda Cholapuram temple built by Rajendra Chola. And that is followed everywhere by the other kings later. But when the Chola started, when Vijayalaya established his Chola empire and it was consolidated by his son Aditya Chola, the temple building activity started by the Cholas. When they started this temple building activity, the temples were not so big, huge in size. And it was small temples. But every small temple that they built, they had a unique style which they had incorporated into it with a lot of miniature sculptures. And this is the hallmark of the Chola architecture in the early stage. So today in our lecture, we'll be talking and we'll be seeing a lot about the miniature sculptures in the Chola temples. Let's go into this. Miniature sculptures is nothing new. Miniature sculpture representations have been there in this Indian history for a long time. The 3rd century BC, Sanchi Stupa or the Amravati Stupa, all these had miniature sculptures like what you see here in the picture. All these miniature sculptures depicting the life of the Buddha and the stories from the Jakarta tales were carved by ivory carvers in Sanchi and many other places also. So these miniature sculptures were totally designed to give a storyline for the incident that is being depicted there. So miniature sculptures started as early as 3rd century BC and it was carried on in Sanchi and other, people, other places also. Basically, these miniature sculptures were created as bas reliefs, not as a full relief sculptures, but bas relief sculptures. Some were high bas reliefs, some were low bas reliefs. And this was used to narrate the story and at times representation of individual gods and goddesses also. Now what you see here is a miniature sculpture of the Amravati. Amravati in Andhra. This is now in the Chennai Museum. This is made of limestone, which is almost like a marble. So this is also with a lot of small figurines. The story of Jagatha Tales has been explained or the life of Buddha has been explained in these things. It's amazing to see these uh, miniature sculptures in Amravati. Miniature sculptures is not only new to us, it has been there from the Harappan and the Indus Valley civilization time. We can see these miniatures of the Harappan and Indus Valley civilization 
in their seals and small idols that they had made it in those days as a idol meant for worship. This evolved into the different style of representing the miniature sculptures in the panels that was what we see in the temples of San, in the stupas of Sanchi and other places. However, this art had totally faded away when the Guptas came over the north. They started building huge temples where it was full of huge sculptures, all made out of sandstone and uh, little softer stones. And after the Guptas, the Pallavas and the Chalukyas down south started this temple building activity from 6th century and they also built huge and massive structures. What we see in Mahabalipuram are all huge massive structures and there is nothing called a miniature in that. Similarly is the case of the Badami caves by the Chalukyas. And till 9th century, after the 3rd century BC, Till 9th century, the miniature representations were totally forgotten for a long time in the Indian history. The representations of miniature sculptures in the temple, I would say, was revived by the early Cholas in the 9th century by the great Aditya Chola, son of Parantaka Chola, and it continued only for some time. It did not continue after long, for a long time, but it continued for some time. From Raja Raja's time, the Chola started building magnificent temples and this art of representing miniature sculptures in their temples slowly faded away. And again, after some time in the imperial Cholas, it resurfaced again as miniature sculptures seen in Darasuram and Tirubhuvanam. But these are, I would not say it is really a very small miniature, but Considerably, it's a small panel sculptures that has been seen here in this. What we see about miniature sculptures of the early Chola is pertaining to the Aditya and Parantaka period of the Chola dynasty. Now, we come to Srinivasanallur. Srinivasanallur is a sleepy town, very godforsaken town, very close to Mussuri on the banks of Kaveri. Here, Raditya had built a temple for Goraknatha. And today, the temple is not known as Goraknatha temple. People call it as Kuranganada Swami. The Goraknatha has become Kuranganada. In this temple, beautiful miniature is seen in the Torana, Makara Toranas that is there on the niches of the Koshtas. Now what you see here is a beautiful Makara Torana. In this, if you see in the center, Shiva is using a Trisula in attacking an Asura. It could be Andaka Asura or somebody. That has been depicted here. And you find the four Bhutaganas on either side. And two Makara Yalis, Makara as are there on the either side of the Torana. They are opening their mouth wide and from there, inside the mouth, emerges the warriors who are seated on lions. And they come and get into the other Makara's mouth. So it's a beautiful creation, artistic creation. And that comes with the Kirti Mukham in the front. So this is a miniature sculpture. The entire sculptures, whatever you see on the Makara Toranas, are all miniature in size. So Aditya started this and all that he has represented in Srinivasanallu is amazing miniature sculpture. Look at this. This is on the corners of the basement. That you have these Yalis, Yalivari. In that corner portion, one Yali, instead of being flat, it's just protruding out and its mouth is widely open and from inside the mouth emerges a warrior. What a beautiful depiction of this miniature. You can see it here, the Yali is opening its mouth and the warrior is emerging out of this. 
It's an amazing depiction of the miniature in Srinivasan alone. Again, on the Prishtave, on the walls of the uh, outer walls of the temple, there are pillars, pilasters which have been shown. In that, they have beautifully aged dancing figures, which is amazing and beautiful, right on the top. What you see here is the dancing image of a dancer here and a drummer by that side and three Bhutaganas and some floral motifs on top and down below also you find some floral motifs. All this put together, it's not more than 12, 12 to 13 inches in size. In that 12 to 13 inches by 8 inches or 6 inches size, they have etched up all these beautiful sculptures there. This is done about 1300 years ago and it's there in the temple of Srinivasanalu, which is now maintained by the Archaeological Survey of India. Now we come to the next temple, Pullamangai. Where are these miniature sculptures found? Miniature sculptures are found in the temples built by Aditya and his son Parantaka in many places in the Chola Desa. The famous among those two, three places are the Pullamangai, Punjai, and other Nageshwar Swami temple, and so on. Pullamangai temple, today as we call it, it is known as the Alandure Mahadeva temple in the Tamil records. And it's a beautiful temple built by Parantaka, Aditya's son, somewhere around the early 10th century, beginning of the 10th century, or it could be later than that, or uh, slightly later, at the end of the 9th century. This temple has got fantastic miniature sculptures. Now, if you see where these miniature sculptures are located, now this is the panel of Ganesha that you see in the temple. Right here, where the arrow I show you here, these are all the miniature sculptures. Small miniature sculptures which is just six inch by six inch or four inch by four inch and things like that. It's amazing miniature sculptures right below at the basement level. You find the entire basement all around the temple prakara and the outer wall is being represented with these miniature sculptures. Now you see, just to show the size of the miniature sculpture. I've shown it with my hand. That is the size of the miniature sculpture, which is amazing and beautiful. Now, where are these miniature sculptures located? They are, I told you it is in the basement. Today in the Pullamangai temple, the basement is at least four to five feet below the ground, present day ground level. Now, if you want to see these miniature sculptures in the beauty of these miniature sculptures, you'll have to get inside the pit and then only you can enjoy this. Unfortunately, this temple is not under ASI and there is absolutely a neglect in the part of the government of Tamil Nadu also in maintaining it. It's in a very, very bad state. God alone has to save this temple and with this wonderful creations of miniatures in that, this is something which we have to protect it for posterity and I think sooner or later some action should be taken to give a protection to this particular thing. Now you see here is the wall, the pit that they have made. This is the present ground level. This is four feet below down. So if you want to see this miniature sculptures there, you will have to get inside the pit and see it. And, it's, and when it rains, the whole rainwater gets stagnated into this and a lot of insects and everything gets into that and uh, it becomes a messy sight. Uh, I wish and pray that Pullamangai should be taken by the government of uh, India and the ASI and should be maintained well. Now coming to the other temple, Nageswara Swami temple in Kumbakonam. It's in the heart of the city. It is known as Kudandai Kilkotam. This temple, this, again, these miniature sculptures are presented in the basement. 
the entire ramayana starting from the birth of rama up to his patabhishekam are repeated in about 60 odd panels you know where this is located i said it's in the basement the basement is the place exactly where you walk it is much below your eye level and if you want to really see these pictures you will have to squat down and see even then you will get only about uh, an angle to see that if you really want to see the pictures in beauty and enjoy it you will have to lie down on the floor to see that that place they have done this again this is an unfortunate thing this temple is under worship and they have whitewashed this temple many a times and lot of dust and other things get accumulated and most of these wonderful panels have been gone or rather what you call i would say it has been destroyed beyond the recognition at some points of time so this also needs the government's eye on this to be taken and maintained and mind you this ramayana sculptures in nageswar swami temple <coughs> is being done in the 9th century or 10th century early this is at least about 400 years before kamban was born and kamban wrote the kamba ramayana the earlier version that everybody knew was the valmiki ramayana which was in sanskrit language the proficiency of these sculptors who have made it shows very clear they were thorough with the valmiki ramayana every shloka as said in the valmiki ramayana is beautifully interpreted and made as a sculpture yeah. so the bilingual thing was very common in those days people were able to understand the ramayana very clearly by going around this so once you go around one prakaram seeing all these sculptures the entire ramayana is read you can just feel the entire ramayana being read is unfortunate today this temple is not been maintained lot of new constructions have happened so very many sculptures are been finished gone like sita kalyanam and all they have created a shrine for dakshina murti and inside that the sita kalyanam panel is lost and so many other panels like that has been lost into this temple it's right below at the low level where you walk it is in par with your foot so it's very difficult to see this and look at the way in which they whitewashed it and all the oil everything the shoot from the uh, the karpuras and everything that's been there it is destroying this entire beautiful sculptures that is seen here look at this i'm showing you a brahma sculpture on the koshta you all know the koshtas have on the three or uh, three sides of the temple have beautiful images this is the wonderful brahma that you see in the nageshwar swami temple you look at the size of this brahma is 4 and 1/2 feet such a beautiful brahma and this is the miniature on either side of the brahma down below you find these two miniatures you can imagine what is the size of it comparative study of this brahma you can know what should be the size of these miniatures such a small miniature now coming to the ramayana sculptures of uh, nageswar swami temple this is the first ever sculpture that you could see is this is depicting the ashwamedha yaga dasaratha did the ashwamedha yaga putra kamishti yaga sorry it's putra kamishti yaga to get sons so that yagya or putra kamishti yagya was conducted by a great rishi called rishya singha maharishi the rishya singha maharishi was born out of a deer how could you differentiate a rishi and say that it's rishya singha maharishi just because he was born out of a deer this sculptor has 
given the image of Rishya Singha Maharishi seated here with the deer's face. Now, this is the yajna which is going, the holy fire, from which the Bhutagana is emerging out. The Bhutagana is coming out and giving the Paisa Patra. So, Dasaratha is here, his wife, Kaushalya, is there. They both come forward to receive this Paisa Patra. Right behind that is Vasishta. It was Vasishta who had asked Dasaratha to do this Putrakamishtiyagam to get his progeny. So Vasishta, once he sees this Bhutagana coming out of the holy fire, he is very happy. He is seeing at other rishis and saying, my mission is completed. There are three other rishis here and three other rishis here. I mean, two other rishis excluding Rishya Singha seated here doing this. And Almost 11 people are depicted in the small panel of 6 inch by 4 inch. 6 inches by 4 inch. The entire Putraka Mishti Yaga, what was the purpose of it? How many people were there? Who conducted it? And what was it? It's very, very clearly and distinctively explained in this such a small panel. Look at this. This is the next sculpture. From here you can make out how the total stones have eroded. The total stones are being eroding so fast. It's almost 1300 years back they have done that. It slowly started eroding. And this is the panel which says Dasaratha is seated here. He is giving the Paisam to first Kausalya, his Pattamagarishi. Behind her is seated is Sumitra. Vasishta is here. Kaikeyi is his beloved wife. So Dasaratha always had a soft corner for Kaikeyi. So Kaikeyi is seated next to Dasaratha. And Dasaratha is giving the first paisan to Kausalya. Look at the beautiful depiction, how it's been done. This is the next panel. After paisan, they all give birth to Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Chaturugna. Now this is Kosala, Kausalya. She is feeding Rama as a baby. Look at that. She is lying down on a cot. This is the baby Rama, which is lying in the cot. Kausalya is also lying down on the cot. Her face is totally damaged. But her breasts are seen. She is feeding the baby Rama. The other maids are all there. Now, if they have to present the Kausalya in the full form, this small panel of 4 by 4 will not be sufficient. So they have shown the Kausalya's leg folded and kept like that. What an artistic representation. What a beautiful geometrical representation has been made here. Amazing. Kausalya feeding baby Rama here. This is the next panel, which shows Dasaratha seated with again Kaikeyi here, Kausalya and Sumitra are there with their babies on, everybody. So Dasaratha is playing with his sons. Beautifully shown here is Dasaratha playing with his sons, baby sons. Now, next panel, which we see here, is the Tatakavadam. Vishwamitra comes, he takes Rama. That's the story goes. So when Vishwamitra takes Rama to kill Tataka, so Tataka comes there to kill Rama or destroy Vishwamitra. So Tataka is a demon, huge demon. She had a huge figure. Look at the way half the panel is devoted for her. Even then, what the artist has done is he has folded her legs to that extent in a position as if she's coming, lunging forward to kill Rama. So look at the way in which he has projected her and look at Rama. He's just ready to shoot the arrow on this Tataka. Lakshmana is scared behind and Vishwa, I mean Vishwamitra Maharishi is right behind asking Rama to kill Tataka. 
don't ever spare her even if she's a lady and you don't you have a vow not to kill a lady please kill her she doesn't come under any category of being called a woman she is a demon so you have to destroy her and that's what vishwamitra says here by showing his hands like that and this is the tataka vada look at this tataka is being killed she has fallen down the huge tataka is again shown here such a huge figure of tataka is shown here rama is there lakshmana is there and vishwamitra is there behind he is saying rama you have killed it happy that she is dead so that way artistically giving the proportions in such a beautiful manner depicting tataka a demon in such a huge form he has do, given almost three fourth of the panel for her and others are depicted here and there show that size the proportions of what it is what a beautiful artistic representation how beautifully is red ki valmiki ramayana taken the contents and shown this this master creator who has done this look at this this is the next panel rama sita and lakshmana are going for vanavas so rama is here she is hugged by sumitra sita is falling at the feet of kausalya taking leave to go to vanavas lakshmana is behind so they take leave from the mothers and they go for the vanavas what a beautiful depiction again this is a 4 inch by 4 inch panel some of the panels are 6 inch by 4 inch some of the panels are only 4 inch by 4 inch this is an amazing panel of 4 inch by 4 inch where in which this scene is wonderfully depicted in ramayana now this is the beautiful panel rama is crossing the river ganga in guhas boat so rama lakshmana and sita are there in the boat valmiki ravana states that when rama goes in the boat crossing the river ganga he narrates the story of the descent of ganga to parvati i mean sita saying that this is the great importance of ganga river and how she came how she took birth and came into this world and everything and as a person who is uh, rowing the boat guha has no business to get into their conversations the guha has to just keep rowing the boat alone so here at some point of time hearing rama's explanation lakshmana shows some action in that he he immediately shows his uh, thing and says aha something like that that sound of lakshmana at that point of time makes guha to turn his face and look at lakshmana what a beautiful depiction look at the eyes lakshmana's eyes and guha's eyes are meeting rama and sita are behind look at the sculpture in which the sculpture in manner in which he has done it exactly ditto following the words of valmiki ramayana he has done it what a beautiful depiction now coming to the next sculpture we have surpanaka vada surpanaka comes and says she wants to marry rama rama says go and marry my brother so she comes to lakshmana lakshmana chases her away so again she goes to rama again she is being thrown between these two people now she says okay this lady is there sita is there because of her rama is not marrying why not i kill her and she tries to advance towards sita so sita is running away and hugging on to rama here lakshmana immediately is furious he pushes her down this is a demon again surpraka is a demon she pushes her down just keeps one knee on top of her belly pushes her down holds her by hair and cuts the nose of the ears what a beautiful depiction again 
so many colors, so many whitewashes, everything else defaced most of these sculptures. And of course, the weatherings also. Look at this. Surpanaka runs and comes to Ravana's court, crying to Ravana, saying, and Kumbhakarna who are seated there, look at this, Rama has done, Rama and Lakshmana have done this, you have to take away Sita back to your place. And that's how it uh, starts. The Surpanaka coming and crying at Ra Ravana's place is shown in this beautiful panel. And look at this. What an ex one of the most beautiful, excellent panel. This is the Maya Maricha Vatam. But Maricha comes as a golden uh, deer and dances in front of Sita, and Sita wants it, and Rama goes chasing behind here, and he kills them. Now you see here two figures. Rama alone went to kill the deer. Lakshmana did not follow. But why should there be a two figures here? This is Rama. If you will have to see the story in full, Rama chasing the golden deer and shooting the arrow off to kill that deer. The moment he shoots and kills the deer, Maricha falls down. That split second action, Rama shooting the deer, next minute the arrow has hit him. He sees Rama sees Maricha fallen here. Both the Rama, that entire action is depicted in this one sculpture. What a beautiful way of depicting the action that had happened. Shooting of the arrow, the killing of the demon, and both are represented with two Ramas here. See, if you see the leg position of Rama, this leg is so high. The leg has just come down to this level. That is few microseconds it has happened. That few microseconds is being captured in this sculpture. This leg is almost in the same position. This is also in the same position. This thigh, which is in par with the ground level, has slightly tilted down. And that action takes only a few seconds. And in that second, the deer is killed, Maricha has fallen down. What a fantastic representation of the sculpture. Again, this is a beautiful sculpture. Ravana is taking away Sita. Sita is there in the chariot. She's turned her face out. And Ravana is there in the chariot. So when Ravana goes there, he is attacked by Jatayu. Now Jatayu comes and attacks. Jatayu is a huge bird. So the bird flies from the top, comes and picks on Ravana and different sides. It's not attacking, it's not a fight one-to-one -one fight. It is attacking from above. It's pecking Ravana in every point. So Ravana is not able to stay in one point and fight. So he's twisting and turning and throwing his sword all around to kill Jatayu. That's what is shown, the spinning action of Ravana and the Jatayu. Finally, he kills the Jatayu and Jatayu falls here. What a beautiful depiction of the same story the action, how it followed and how it completed. That scene is totally depicted wonderfully in this panel of Jatayuvadam. Now this is the panel where Rama and Lakshmana are going to Kishkinda. Once they reach Kishkinda, Hanuman comes and meets him. So Hanuman, this is Hanuman. You see the big tail here. Hanuman, the moment he sees Rama, he says Hanuman. So immediately Rama's, Hanuman becomes a Dasa of Rama. So this is the Kishkindavanam and Rama and Lakshmana and Hanuman praying at the feet of Rama. Now this is the next one which shows the Valivatam. What for uh, Rama came there and made friends with Shudriva and he killed Vali. So Vali and Sugriva are seen fighting here. Rama is behind and kills Vali from behind. That's what is shown here in this. 
Look at this. This is Sugriva in his deathbed with all the Vanaras screaming all around. And after that, Sugriva's Patabhishegam happens. Rama and Lakshmana crown Sugriva as the king of Kishkinda, and his wife is also seen here by the side. Now, after being crowned, Rama gives them that time because let the rainy season go and we will start searching for Sita. They all enjoy in drinking and merrymaking and they forget the vow that they give it to Rama. So Lakshmana goes and threatens Sugriva that he will kill him. Sugriva realizes his mistake. He, his wife, everybody come and fall at his feet of Lakshmana and say, please save us. We have, please forgive us. We will now do the work what we have been assigned. And that's the scene which has been depicted here. And this is again a beautiful uh, representation. Hanuman is sent to find Sita. He goes to Lanka. When he goes to Lanka, Lanka is, is being guarded by a, a goddess called Lankini. That Lankini goddess is such a huge goddess who guards Lanka for Ravana. So Ravana to go inside the Lanka itself is very difficult without Lankini being the guard there. So Ra Hanuman, see he fights with Lankini, he takes a small form, enters the Lankini's mouth and look at that, he comes out of the Lankini's ear, scaring her and killing her and Lankini falls down. This is again an action. The action is beautifully depicted here. If you just don't follow the story, you will never understand anything. Look at the way in which the story has been depicted very clearly. What a beautiful way of depiction. The Lankini is falling down. Out of the ear of Lankini, <coughs> Hanuman is coming upside down. Look at this. Hanuman is shown upside down with his legs up. He is entering into the Lankini's mouth. Oh, what a beautiful narration of Lankini and the killing of Lankini has been done here. Now, Ra, I mean, Hanuman goes to Sita's place in, uh, I mean, Ravana's place in uh, Lanka, sees Sita in Ashokavanam, gives her the Kanayai. So when he goes there, all the Rakshasis there who are guarding Sita are all sleeping. So Hanuman meets her and gives her the so this is what has been depicted here. All the Lankinis, all the Rakshasis are here. Sita is sitting here under the Ashoka tree. This is the Ashoka tree here. And Sita is here. And Hanuman is here. With all Bhavya, he hands over the Rama's uh, ring to her and says, Rama is there to help you. And he is going to come, you, come here and take you back to Ayodhya. Now when Ra Anuman comes there, the news spreads and immediately Indrajit comes there to fight Hanuman. He destroys the Ashokavan. So Indrajit is assigned to kill Hanuman. So Indrajit comes there with the Brahmastram. So immediately Hanuman accepts the Brahmastram and surrenders to Indrajit. See, look here. Hanuman is here in Ashokvanam and Indrajit is here and his Brahmastra goes and binds up totally Hanuman. So after binding, he's been taken to the court of Ravana. Look at the court of Ravana. Ravana is seated here. Hanuman is a seat out of his tail and sits in equal position with Ravana. What a beautiful depiction. Look at this. Indrajit is standing there, watching. Ravana is talking to Hanuman. Hanuman is seated in this coil of uh, his tail, which is made as a seat. He's seated on top of it. What a beautiful depiction. Amazing. And the next one is, they light up his uh, tail and the entire Lanka Dahanam happens. This is the monkey Lama Hanuman who's running all around the place. That's why Anuman is shown as two. He's running around all the places and the entire Lanka is burnt by Hanuman. 
So this is Lanka Dahanam, which is very beautifully shown in this sculpture. The next is Vibhishana Charanagati. Rama and Lakshmana are seated here. Vibhishana comes and surrenders to Rama. All the monkeys are there down below Rama. Look at this. All the monkeys are carrying stones to build the Setu. The Setu Bandhanam is happening. So the bridge across the sea is built by the monkeys and uh, Rav, uh, Ravanavat Samharam has to happen now. So this is the uh, way in which uh, the sculptures of uh, what you call the great uh, temple of Nageshwar Swami is there. But many other sculptures are lost and uh, many disturbances are there, like new constructions have come in that place and some of them have been buried under the present day floors that have been raised on top and a lot of sculptures after this episode is mostly lost and uh, it's a very sad thing that uh, Pullamangai sculptures, most of them, I mean this uh, Nagasusan sculptures are very badly damaged because of the weathering conditions and very, very poor maintenance. Now we come to the next uh, temple of Pullamangai, Brahmapurishwara temple at Pullamangai. This is also the same period or slightly later than the Nagesha Swami temple. Here also you have Ramayana sculptures plus sculptures from different other Puranas basically depicting Shiva in more and uh, here and there a few Vishnu sculptures are also there. Now what you see here is the Maya Maricha. Maricha is coming. Maricha and Subahu are destroying the uh, Homa or uh, the Yajna which Vishwamitra Maharishi is doing. Now Vishwamitra Maharishi is seated here and he is doing the Yajna along with other Rishis. Rama is aiming at Maricha, hits Maricha very badly and he runs away for his life. This is again a beautiful sculpture, 4 inch by 4 inch, depicted in the temple of Pullamangai. You've got amazing Ramayana sculptures. Again, this is the Surpanakas cutting of the nose in a different form. Here again, Sita is turning back in front and hugging on to Rama. Lakshmana is cutting the nose of Surpanaka. Look at this. It's a very, very interesting uh, sculpture. Rav, I mean, Rav, uh, Hanuman goes to Lanka in search of Sita. He searches her everywhere and finally lands up at the bedroom of Ravana. This is Ravana shown here with multiple arms and multiple legs. So he's lying in the bed. There's a beautiful lady lying by the side. She fits into the exact, I mean, details given by the people as how Sita looks. So Hanuman comes into this and he says, okay, Sita has accepted Ravana and she has joined him. Now I have nothing to do. And he's so sad, he goes there to see her by close. Then he goes close and sees her. The saliva is flowing out of her mouth. Then he realizes only the asura natured ladies have the saliva coming out of their mouth when they sleep. Deva Guna doesn't have that. So he confirms that this is not Sita and goes to Ashoka Vanam in search of her. This is depicted in Valmiki Ramayanam. So beautifully it has been sculpted here. Look at that Mandodari who is sleeping with Ravana and Hanuman here. What a fantastic depiction of that. Now this is again a beautiful sculpture of almost 13 characters here. This is Bharata coming to Dandakaranya to asking Rama to return back. He comes with a big paraphernalia of elephants, horses, everything, asking Rama to come back. Again, a small six inch by six inch square. Look at the number of characters and things, uh, I mean, the animals being depicted, a horse, two, three elephants, so many soldiers and so many people, Bharata, Chaturgana and other ministers, everybody riding on the elephant and coming there. What a fantastic depiction of this. This Pullavangai sculptures are slightly better off than what we saw in 
Nagasur Swami Temple. Look at this. A comparative study of these two sculptures. We saw the sculpture of what uh, in Nagasur Temple here down below, and this is what is in Pullamangai. Here it is given differently. Rama, Lakshmana, and Vishwamitra are walking. Suddenly there is a huge sound, and so uh, this uh, uh, so not super what is it? Um, Tataka comes from behind to attack Rama. That split second, Rama, he just turns his torso alone to one side and shoots the arrow on her, and she's fallen down. The torso of Rama is alone bent, but the walking nature, the foot that has been kept in the position of walking is just the same. What a beautiful depiction, an artistic creation. Amazing. Look at that. You can make it out very clearly. The three are walking. Vishwamitra says, okay, she has come here. Tataka has come. Kill her, Rama. The action of Vishwamitra shows very well. Look at her, kill her. So immediately Rama shoots the arrow and she has fallen down. How beautifully that one small scene is captured into this sculpture of Amazing sculpture made by 1300 years ago by great unknown artists. This is again a comparative study of the three sculptures depicting the same scene. Before the Tata Gavarnam, Vishwamitra takes Rama, Lakshmana to the forest. He gives them the mantra, Bala, Atibala, everything, and they start. Rama is a small boy of 14 years. Vishwamitra is a tall man, six foot plus, an aged person. He teaches the sastra, astra sastras to Rama. In first thing you see in Nageshwar Swami temple here, he is teaching him how to hold the bow. Vishwamitra is hidden behind Rama. You can see his two legs. By hands, his hands are also parallel to that of what Rama is holding. He is teaching him how to hold the bow. In this sculpture of Punjai, he is teaching how to hold the string. How to hold the string and shoot the arrow. In the third one, he is teaching him how to aim. Look at the eye. They are all fixed on the object. This is the first sculpture. You can see Vishwamitra is here, Rama is here. They are, Ram, Vishwamitra is just behind Rama. He is teaching him how to hold the bow. Rama is looking at Vishwamitra and understanding how to hold that. Now, in the next sculpture, you see, Vishwamitra is coming and correcting his positions. Look at that way you have to hold the bow and this is how you have to hold the string and release your arrow. The position in which you have to attack is being explained by Vishwamitra. In the third sculpture, look at this. Vishwamitra is an old man, I said, six foot plus. Rama is a 14 year old child. Look at the way in which he has, they have depicted. Rama is a small boy, Vishwamitra's size and Rama's size. Look at the way he is teaching him, holding the bow and also the arrow and how you have to look at the point to shoot. The point of shoot, how it is to be focused and how you have to do it. What a beautiful depiction, amazing depiction. And again, this is the Vali Vatam. Vali is killed, he has fallen. This is the Kumbakonam temple. This is in Punjai. Again, Vali is shown here, lying down. In Pullamangai, this is an amazing sculpture. Vali is done, he is in the deathbed, lying there. Tara, his wife, is there. All the monkeys are crying. 
every action shows that oppa reaction you know this fellow is hitting his head down below another person is shouting his mouth is open that monkey is crying wide open the mouth wide open look at that how beautifully they have depicted this monkey crying with a wide open mouth what an amazing depiction in such a small panel amazing sculpture of ramayana now we come to the rest of the sculptures in pullamangai this is ganga visarjana murti shiva releasing the ganga from his matted locks to please parvati who has turned her face away that side this side is bagiratha bagiratha says please receive relieve the ganga from your hat so from the matted locks shiva releases the ganga and she comes out look at this this is again the mahishasura mardini very beautifully depicted a chamunda can call her again a small sculpture look at this gajasamara murti an amazing depiction such a small one parvati is here she is running away from the samaram and the baby skanda is scared and immediately he wants to get away from parvati and there's a attendant lady maid servant she is trying to take hold of skanda this gana down below saying amazed ah he shouted look at the face of the elephant the skin of the elephant is been torn and shiva is emerging out as the gatsumar murti this is a panel 6 inch by 6 inch shiva depicted with eight arms and so many characters there's one gana here one gana here both in ascharya what a fantastic depiction look at this again the one other form of uma sahita murti this is the kirata arjuniyam shiva is fighting with arjuna and the bow the boar is here and uh, that fight of kirata arjuniyam is beautifully depicted here shiva is a huge figure so he is shown almost the size twice the size of this arjuna but beautifully accommodated into this small panel of 4 inch by 4 inch by giving a posture of kirata in such a way that he suits to fight arjuna in that size look at this this is uh, shankara narayana on either side you have parvati and lakshmi the shankara narayana and this is adhanarishwara a beautiful depiction of adhanarishwara totally eroded and natesha a beautiful urdhva janu dance of natesha this is the same sculpture that you will find in badami elora uh, 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 and other places same depiction of urdhva janu of nataraja and this is the chandesh anugraha murti shiva tying the kundrai male around the head of chandesha this is beautifully given here chandesha anugraha murti the most beautiful chandesha anugraha murti sculpture is seen in the gangai konda cholapuram temple and this is a miniature pan which is 1 by 100 of its size what a beautiful uh, depiction this is the kama dahana shiva burning kama who shoots the arrow of love for him kama is here rati is here and parvati is here everything happens in himalayas so beautifully depicted this is shiva and parvati seated in kailasha with the bull behind them and the ganas on top this is again one more form of nataraja what a beautiful nataraja is the chaturatha andavam of nataraja the ganas are playing the drums for the nataraja's dance now i have interpreted these dance sculptures or some of these sculptures from the pullamangai temple i have done my sketches had it been in good form it should be something like this this is my pencil drawing and pen drawings of these pullamangai sculptures of matesha look at this 
the ganas playing the drums this fellow is playing something like that uh, we have the something like a fiddle like the kotanguchi fiddle like that something you know you know somebody goes selling that no made out of the shell like that one instrument he is playing the other fellow is playing the drum what a beautiful depiction of nataraja again this is uh, the bikshadana murti shiva comes as bikshadana to tarikavanam and the rishi patni says here and you have the bhutagana down below and the deer trying to eat the grass from shiva's uh, hands this is again my interpretation of the same sculpture in my pen sketches this is the gatsamhara murti my favorite subject again i did not spare this this is also the representation of gatsamhara murti temple and this is my again one more favorite of vishwamitra teaching rama how to do it this is my representation in pen of vishwamitra teaching rama eyes very clearly fixed in this this is shiva kamadagana murti parvati is here so this is kama this is rati shiva and apasmara purusha is here this is the bhutagana there is a bull behind and the hermitage also where parvati lived there it all happens in the himalayas and this is as per the kumara sambhavam of kalidasa this year kamadagana murti this is again shiva and parvati seated in kailasha again this is again a pen sketch and now we come to kamarasavalli a temple of cholas which is slightly later day here the sculptures are in better condition but they don't have the beauty and the grace and the what do you call the essence very clearly depicted as we see in the early temples this temple is about 400 years later but still the sculptures are uh, miniature but it doesn't have that grace and the beauty of what we see this again the gatsamara murti nataraja again chindesha nagra murti this is slightly better preserved but um, uh, but i would say this is something an excellent sculpture i would say it's a good sculpture the same uh, early chola sculptures are seen in the tiruvaru temple of dagaraj uh, swami here is shiva and parvati again shiva is seated in kailasa along with parvati and ravana is shaking the kailasa again kali now we come to the beautiful depictions of makara torana in the early stages this is a 9th century temple at um, of um, alur a beautiful depiction of shiva tandava in makara torana a very small depiction look at the bhutaganas all that in the makara torana surya and chandra on the other side and shiva is dancing there a granite sculpture if you see the size of this what in the original size it will be about 8 to 9 inches in this 8 to 9 inches size the entire thing is been given here all scooped out of hard very hard granite rocks it's not soft stone again the gatsamara murti depicted in the makara torana you have again shiva doing a tandava the makara open the mouth and so many other warriors coming out of this from the either side and what a beautiful depiction this is again from the palur temple this is from the nar uh, temple of kodubalur again a beautiful depiction of makara torana with so beautifully depicted with the um, ganesha this is also a foot size from here to this it will be approximately 12 to 13 inches that's all the entire scene is be beautifully depicted very intricately this is from the kodubalur temple and the pillar designs amazing designs of the 
pillars. This is what you see here. The floral patterns in the pillars of Kodumbalu Temple. Look at this floral patterns. How beautifully they have done it. What amazing the designs. These are the designs that are being copied in most of the silk saris and everything that uh, ladies wear today. Amazing designs. Look at that. All created about thousand and odd years ago. Look at this. Look at the floral designs. This is from the temple of Punjai. What intricate carving of the floral designs. The pillar itself is approximately about 12 inches in size. And that is made in three shapes. It's uh, uh, three faces are being given. And each face is being decorated with floral motifs. Amazing design work in that. Look at that Ganapati you see here in one of the faces of this and muttusharam they call it as muttusharam so the pearls as if strings of pearls are hung all these things are designed as if things of strings of pearls are hung there and look at this mind you look at this sculpture i'm coming to it this is a simma this Simma sculpture is just a small bas relief. If you see here, I've inserted a twig inside the mouth of the Simma. It comes, goes inside like this and comes out that way. That way, the opening also is being made. I've just inserted a small twig, which was lying down to take this photograph. Can you make out? What a beautiful depiction. Fantastic carving. What sort of tools they had. How they could do it in granite stone is mind boggling. Look at this. The dancer. She's showing her back and dancing. In Natya Shastra, it is known as um, Prishta Swastika. That's Prishta with back and Swastika is this pose, crossing the leg like that. So the Prishta Swastika pose, she's dancing. And the drummer is playing the drums. And here you find the three ganas on there. All this sculpture is less than one foot size. From here to, from this top to bottom, this level, it's about a foot. What a great work, filigree works they've done. This is again the designs of the pillar. Look at this. This is again from the Kudumbalu temple. Gatsamara Murti, Parvati running away. Here, if you see here, this looks like a floral design. Okay? Now let's see the close-up of this. These are all dancers. Twelve dancers are there. Each dancer in different pose. Each dancer will not be more than two and a half inches with all the details of hands, legs, the backspace, the hand the gestures, the face, the hairstyle, the jewelry, everything is depicted in the two and a half inches. Now if you compare this with this, this is the dancers. Twelve dancers are depicted less than the whole thing must be about two foot size in that with Gelsamara Murti and Parvati. What sort of tools they had? What sort of dedication they had for this? To create such marvels. Now we come to the next one, the marvels of Darasuram temple. Darasuram is a magnificent temple, very huge in size. But unlike the Brahadishwara temple or Gangai Ganda Cholapuram or Brahadishwara in Tanjavu, here the sculptures are more miniature in size, small in size. I wouldn't call it as a miniature like what has been depicted till now what we saw. But these are all small sculptures, yet wonderfully done during the later part of the Chola era. Look at this. This is again a Kamadahana Murti. Shiva is seated in Kailash. Kama is come here, throwing, I mean, shooting the air on Shiva. Kama is burnt and his Kama is falling here. 
Rati is praying here, asking Shiva to give life back to Kama. What a beautiful depiction. Look at this. This is again the entire Periya Purana talking about the story of the 63 nine marks are etched on this Adrishtanam of the beautiful temple of Dharasuram. Everywhere you have small sculptures. Here you have the warrior in the fighting pose, the Yalis. Look at this one elephant uh, doing the puja to Shivalingam. You have floral designs, you have a Gelsomara Murti. You have all the nine marks seated here and praying in front of the temple. All that stories of Periya Purana, 63 nine marks stories are depicted wonderfully here. Look at this one small sculpture here of Lakshmi. This is another sculpture here, it is Hanuman. And there's again one more warrior. Look at the dancer. Look at the filigree designs on this. Everything is miniature. Amazing miniatures of Dharasuru. Look at this. This is again a small uh, one foot by uh, two foot sculpture on the lower panel where a pregnant lady is being uh, helped for labor. Two of them are carrying her to the labor and uh, she is put her arm around these two ladies and walking. The social scene of that that era is very beautifully depicted here. Apart from the God's pictures, they've also given all the sculptures of, and the pillars of Dharasura. 96 pillars are there. Every pillar is unique. Every pillar is filled with filigree work of designs and miniature sculptures. Par excellence. Look at this broad based pillar where the entire uh, Kumara Sambhavam is depicted as a story. If you go around this four pillars on the four sides and, and they, they, um, you see the entire Kumara Sambhavam being depicted in this. Look at this. In the pillar you have the Rishabhantaka form of Shiva. This is a small uh, sculpture which is not more than two inches, two inch size, Shiva reclining on the bull. What a beautiful, see, look at my finger there. I've taken this photograph with my finger. You can imagine what is the size of this. What a beautiful depiction. Shiva is beautifully depicted reclining onto the bull. Similarly, a Ganesha, a dancing Ganesha which is much smaller than that. This Shiva doing the Urdu Thandam by Kali, with the Kali on the side. And look at this Gatsamara Murti. This is just one and a half inch. Shiva with eight arms, tearing the elephant and coming out. That Gatsamara pose, the entire circle is shown as Gaja. And look at the floral designs coming out, shooting out of that. Every flower is so beautifully depicted. Flower is so beautifully depicted. It's just the whole thing. This will be approximately about four to five inches, the whole thing. And the Getsamara alone forms about one half to two inches. What sort of miniature work they have done? What sort of tools they have used? How they have created Look at the Somaskanda Murti again in this temple. And coming to the Tribhuvanam temple, here also you have panels like this showing different ways and different scenes of this. The fights, the fight between Yali and uh, the elephant and riders of the elephant. All these are all miniature panels right at the basement on the floor level as you walk. You see lovely sculptures in Dirbhavana temple also. Now look at this. This is one of the most amazing panels, I would say. This is called as Gajap Prasavam. Normally a delivery of an elephant calf takes inside the deep jungle. We hardly happen to see. Today Discovery Channel shows something that's different. In those days, how did they know that? 
this elephant is delivering the calf is just coming out the two aunt elephants are assisting the delivery one has put a trunk around the stomach giving a slight pressure for her to bring out the baby the other one is just picked up her tail to that extent giving a smooth way for the baby to come out the obstruction of the tail should not be there for the baby to come out so she's holding the tail what a beautiful depiction which happens in the wild hardly anybody could see they did it about 1000 years ago in this temple this is again a miniature sculpture look at this a lady is seated here and two elephant calves are been breastfed by her can a lady feed an elephant a baby elephant itself will be a bigger than a lady size how can she feed the beast but what is the stupid sculpture why should they show it it's a clear message the breastfeed or the mother's milk gives you the strength of an elephant how beautifully they have conveyed it in this mother's milk gives you the strength of an elephant it's not only depiction of puranas and itihasas gods and goddesses social life everything they have depicted in this miniatures amazing miniatures they have done the marvel of miniature sculptures being unique creations of this and very effectively <coughs> used in conveying the story narration is the greatest contribution of the great cholas the much is talked about the magnificent temples and the sculptures miniature creations mostly go unnoticed the great master craftsmen who have dedicated their life use tools which we don't know they have created this wonderful wonderful creations this is my dedication to the great unknown masters who have created this miniature sculptures thank you yes sir i am open for questions any questions please come Hi, Hello, doctor. How was it? Guru, can I can I yeah, come please, in? Please, please. Okay. Thank you for an awesome talk. Yeah. Thank And, you. And uh, I felt sad. I had missed all these miniature sculptures. Many ah. of the temples you mentioned, I've been there. Okay. But I've not seen these sculptures. The oh. next time, it made me. this all that i go to a temple i look at all the pictures not thank just you, the sir. deity and come out thank you thank so, you so so like you said it's fantastic the details that they have given and the sad part is we have not maintained it absolutely all the white washing and everything going or people like me not noticing or people noticing and damaging it yeah whatever be we are we are losing a lot on our heritage thanks for people like you who you know open our eyes to look at the smaller prints and not only the bigger prints in a book yeah 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 thank you thank doctor. you thank you doctor any other questions from anybody i would like to take it bro